As I said at the beginning of the liturgy, if we didn't have Lent, we'd have to invent it. Lent is a gift to us. It is a true gift to all of those who take Christ seriously. Because during Lent, it's a time to focus again on that call that he's extended to you and to me to be his disciples, to follow him, to walk with him. And Lent is the opportunity to do that better. You know, I, I don't know when or how or where it happened, but along the way, people have developed this theory that the goal of Christian life is to be without sin. And I find that really interesting. Because if you don't have sin, well, that doesn't mean you're a better person. It just means you don't sin. No, no, no. Jesus never called us to be sinless. He called us to follow him, to walk with him, to walk in the pattern of love that he's shown us. Again and again, if you look at the gospel, and it's one of those things that I find very interesting, that the only time Jesus seemed to be angry at people the only time he spoke harshly was toward the people who were religious. <laughs> oh, everybody else, that wasn't the way he talked to them. He always extended an invitation to be more, to be better. That happened again and again and again. That is what he did over and over throughout his ministry. He extended that invitation to walk with him and to become more. Because ultimately, he came to reconcile us to his Father, to make us one with the Father. That was the invitation. And that's the invitation that is still ours. It's not to be sinless. It means that we are more, that we are more and tr more truly God's own children. That's what he's called us to. You know, it, it's an interesting thing. Last weekend, I talked to you about my eyesight. And the purpose was just to kind of use that as my introduction to what I wanted to say for the homily. You know, that was the hook that you used to catch people. You know? Once I got you listening, then, then maybe the rest of it will come to mind. But, you know, the one thing that even when I had cataracts, if it was a bright day like it was earlier this morning, I never had any trouble reading. I could read very clearly. You know, the brighter the light, the easier it is to see. And that was something that's true. I'm going to say that's true for most of us. People who wear glasses will say that again and again. If they have bright enough light, they don't need them because they can see. And that's an important thing. You know, because during Lent, we're invited to come closer to the light, to walk in that light more fully. And that sometimes makes people more aware of their sins. You know, I, I find that it's especially true for people who have grown older. You know, we have a little more time on our hands to think about the past. And I find that in celebrating the sacrament of penance with them, they'll often focus on things that happened years ago. And they find themselves regretting that and somehow well, somehow being stuck there and beating themselves up about it. You know, it's an easy enough thing to do. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot for me to turn back in my own life and then go, oh, yeah, remember when you were six and you were so mousy to your aunt and she took years to forgive you for that one? Remember when you were seven, you know, and when you were eight, and I go through these things, and the truth is, is that, you know, I've done wrong in my life. I know that. I made a conscious decision not to be loving. It may not have been well thought out, but you know, there are times that I knew I had a choice. I could have done something better, and I chose to be less. And that's true again and again. And, and the temptation is during the season of Lent to focus on that. And I think that that's wrong. You know, when we get closer to the light, we see things more clearly. The other day when we were doing the art and environment to get ready for Lent, we were finishing up, and I thought, you know, the plants were gone, and I thought, oh, you know, that looks kind of barren. And so Rusty and I went out into the yard, and, and I picked up sticks. And so, you know, 
The guy who cuts the grass is happier. And at the same time, it gave something to kind of be a symbol of Lent there. And I brought them in, and I put them in, and I looked at it, and I said, you can't see him against the brick. Hmm. And then I looked at the ones that I'd put in front of the ambo. Oh, well, you can see those very clearly. It's because of the purple. It gives the contrast. And the contrast is what helps us see. And I'm going to say, so I hung those purple panels. Well, I hung one. The deacon hung the other. I'll be honest. I didn't do both. But we hung those. And you know, you can see those sticks. They stand out. But I'd like to point out that the purple is bigger than the sticks. What creates the contrast, what makes it clear, is bigger than what's contrasted. And you know, when we get closer to God, we get closer to the light, and we tend to see our sin more. It becomes clearer. And you know, that's not the reason for Lent. Although, I do love being a confessor, you know? It's one of those things that it's a job I always wanted. When I was about your age, actually, there used to be a television show on every week called The Millionaire. I loved that show. And it was a story of this guy, Michael C. Fina, who was the private personal secretary to this billionaire. And every week he would go into his office and he would pass over his desk a check for a million dollars, tax-free, a million dollars. You think you could spend that money? No? I bet you could. Yeah. You know, over a lifetime for sure. No, the reality is, is, you know, that was a great job. Michael C. Fina. And I thought, you know, I would love to have that job. You know, I always thought that. And then I became a priest, and I realized I do have that job. See, I, I give people absolution for their sins. I speak in the name of God the words of forgiveness and hopefully the words of peace. I give people something that doesn't belong to me it's worth more than a million dollars. It's far more than that. And I get to play Michael Cena, Michael Cifina every week. You know, and it's a great thing to be able to celebrate that. Because we don't need to worry about the past. If we've been forgiven, then we let it go. We let it go. But that doesn't mean we don't see things. And we will. We'll see things more clearly. But what we have to look at is not what's the thing that is standing out, but rather what gives us the contrast, the background, because that's bigger. And that's the mercy, the love, the compassion of our God. It is the abundance of God's mercy. And we need to see ourselves in that light, because the invitation of of Lent, my brothers and sisters, is to become better people. You know, that's one of the things, when I sin, I always know that when I look at myself, I could have been better. You know, when I was sassy to my aunt, I didn't have to do that. I could have been a better person at that point. When I was nasty to that clerk in the store, I, I could have been a better person. When I chose to do something that I knew was wrong, I no, I'm a better person than that. And you know that, too. We all know that. Because the things we go wrong, that we do wrong, stands in contrast to what we are called to be, what we know we could be inside. And Lent is a season that we try to make that happen. That we try to grow in that goodness that is already within us. That we be, try to become more and more the children of God, the children that God formed us to be, to become that person, to strive to do that. Now, it's not going to happen all at once, you know, and so you don't choose a whole bunch of stuff. You know, that's not good. Just a few things, you know, and, and Jesus in the gospel tells us that there are three things that are important, and they're a part of Lent. The first is fasting, prayer, and charity. And fasting is simply going without because in my hunger, then I turn to the Lord and ask the Lord to be the one that fills me up. I empty myself so that God can fill me.
But then what I don't use, what I give up, I need to give away. Because only then have I really handed that over. You know, and so there's those three parts of Lent, the giving up, the giving in to God, and the giving away. And that's what we're called to do. And I'm going to say, you know, maybe this Lent to consider if the goal is to become a better person, some things that would help us be better. I have a friend, we just exchanged an email the other day, a couple of emails actually, and, and she said, well, for the 50th year, she's giving up chocolate again. You know? And I wrote back to her, I said, you know, you might want to try something else. You know, at the age of 80, there's no reason why you shouldn't have chocolate. And so she wrote back, and she laughed, and she said, yes. And then she said, maybe I'll do this instead. And it was something that was positive, something that would end up helping her become a better person. And that's what we're called to do. You know, you and I may carry a grudge that we've had for a long time. Isn't Lent a good time to give that up? Isn't it a good time to just let it go and to forgive the person and move on? Because the grudge doesn't make me a better person. And it doesn't hurt the one that I hold the grudge against. It just makes me a bitter person, not better. You know, maybe for this Lent, I could strive to do a couple of things that I know would help me become that better person. You know, to reach out to others. All of you have phones, and, and you know, I'm going to say, I, I always love watching people. I don't do electronic media very well. So I, I don't have a Facebook page. I don't do any of that <laughs> because I can't figure it out. That's the honest truth. But in any case, you know, I watch people walk around and they're scrolling and I, I can't figure out how they don't walk into walls because they're always looking at their phone. Maybe take a break from that. Not, not the whole day, but just part of the day. Just maybe a few hours. And then use that for something good. You know, all of us have that contact list in our phone. Well, not you yet. That'll come. But we have that contact list in our phone. And maybe go through that list and say, you know, I haven't talked to her in a while or I haven't talked to him. And maybe contact some of those people, especially the people that I might know that could use a call, could use some concern. Make use of that time. There are any number of things, my sisters and brothers, that we can do to become better people. And that's the invitation of Lent. You know, we give up stuff to keep us from that so that we can do those things that will make us better. That's the invitation. To become that person we always knew we could be. To become that. And Lent is the opportunity to strive toward that. Choose just a couple of things and just do that for the 40 days. And the interesting thing about 40 is that psychologists will say that if you want to create a new habit, do something for 21 days. Hmm. I guess God knew something about human nature when he gave us 40. Because that not only makes it a habit, but it becomes something that's a part of us that will continue to grow. So I invite you during Lent to choose things that will help you be better, to be more. 